In this video, I want to look at the issue of self-worth, something that comes up for therapists an awful lot, where there might be a client who just seems unable on the surface to, to view themselves with any self-worth whatsoever. Now, how can we work with a client such as this one. Well, from a memory reconsolidation standpoint, what memory reconsolidation is, is a brain mechanism, of course. So it's not a psychotherapy theory. It's something that naturally happens in the brain, which allows it to update its learning. And in that update, actually completely erase the effects of trauma. And so our job as psychotherapists then is to try and construct our sessions so that we can get to a place where we actually trigger that brain mechanism and completely overwrite the trauma for good. And so if we've got a client who seems unable to view themselves with any self-worth whatsoever. How do we work with that from a memory reconsolidation perspective where we're actually trying to erase that belief, that trauma response? Well, effectively what happens in memory reconsolidation is that we get a core prediction and another way of thinking of this core prediction is the emotionally compelling reason. To maintain those feelings of self-worth. And so from a memory reconsolidation point of view, working with the brain's own natural mechanism, our job is to discover what this core prediction is, discover how the self-worth makes sense. Get to the heart of this underlying prediction. And then once we know the prediction, we can actually generate a prediction error. And once we generate a prediction error that lands we can then actually repeat, you know, the old prediction and the new, repeat them a few times, and that actually rewrites the old trauma and erases it completely. So given that we need to find out the core prediction before we can make a prediction error, because we can't mismatch and disprove a prediction, experientially if we don't know what the prediction is that needs disproving. And so the core thing that you'd need to do in a case like this, where there was this ex these extreme feelings of self-worth, is to actually discover why maintaining the, the low self-worth is important. Now, there are a number of ways that we can do this. Uh, many therapies will have their own way of doing this. I use very often something called the single sentence technique, which is actually in the blog and I'll link to it below, which uses a kind of thing from motivational interviewing. But there's also things that we can use, say, through narrative therapy. where we basically take that stance where we externalize the problem. So there might be, um, you know, we personify the problem as well in, in narrative therapy. So there may well be an issue whereby we would think, okay, let's, let's assume we've got, I don't know, the self-worth gremlin and we'll find out about it. Parts work does very similar things as well. So whichever tool that you're going to use, whichever therapeutic technique you're going to use, it's really key, first of all, to focus on that discovery work to find out why for that particular client, 
The self-worth is so important. And the reason why it's so important to look for each particular client is because I can think of several reasons why it would make sense for a particular person to keep hold of these feelings of low self-worth. One of them, so just to kind of brainstorm some of them, one of them might be about power. So if you are being mistreated so badly, why? Why am I being mistreated this badly? Now, one kind of thing is that you could just say, um, you know, the other person, the other person is the problem. You know, they're bad or whatever. Or you could say, I'm bad. And at least if we say I'm bad, we can tell ourselves that I can change. And it conceptualizes the problem in such a way that it's about us. And if it's about us, well, we've got some power and agency over that. It might not be true. Because, you know, if we're being mistreated so badly, especially as a child, it's, it's not going to be us, is it? it's going to be the other person. But nonetheless, there may well be a conceptualization here where it makes sense to hold on to the power over the ability to solve the, the problem as a result of saying, well, I'm the bad one. And so if I'm the bad one, maybe I can do it different. And then this mistreatment would stop. It kind of gives the person a little bit more hope and agency than if they just think, well, I'm at the mercy of someone here and I've got no control over this whatsoever. So that's one particular possible explanation Another, just to, to brainstorm, it might be, I'm going to keep hold of my low self-worth because if I'm the opposite of that, if I'm someone who feels good about myself, who feels proud of myself, then actually what's going to happen there is someone else is going to knock me off my perch. And that's too painful. I've experienced that before. And I don't want that. Another one might be, I don't know, there might be a family story which basically says, we don't like big heads. And that might be the family story. And so in that case, you've got a very different reason again for the low self-worth. Because by maintaining the low self-worth, it keeps the love and approval of mum and dad. Now, the reason why I've shown a number of different approaches here, a number of different potential reasons why the low self-worth might be present is just to illustrate that this is a very individual thing. So what you're going to need to get to is to find out for that particular person, why is the low self-worth something that needs to be maintained? So even though the client is saying, I want better self-worth, there is this invisible twin as I conceptualize it, who is also in the room with the client, but isn't seen yet by the client or us, which basically says, well, I don't because, and then maybe one of those reasons I've just outlined, or maybe something else, you know, that, that we've not even encountered or thought of yet. But nonetheless, this invisible twin has a very different take on it and why for a really good reason. And so what the invisible twin notices is that actually we don't want to lose the approval of mum and dad, for instance. And so what you get into here is you start to clarify the core prediction and you can basically write it into a sentence. And I know I've blogged about this before, but it would be something like, if I allow myself to feel good about me, 
let's assume that's what it is that they want, then this bad thing will happen. And that bad thing might be, I don't know, I'll, um, I'll stick with the one I've just said. I'll lose the love and approval of mum and dad. And so instead of that, I'll carry on telling myself that I'm utterly worthless. And so what we're encountering there is they've got a problem which is so big that they've come to therapy, the worthlessness. But as this starts to become this story, this invisible twin starts to become explicit, we realize that actually the worthlessness is also a protection against a problem that seems much, much worse. Losing that love. And it's only when you get into this prediction here where you can actually start then to generate some sort of mismatch information. But until you get to this discovery stage and find the prediction, you can't mismatch it in an intentional way. It's only when you know what the kind of core belief is that you can create that kind of disconfirmation experience. Otherwise, you could be disconfirming and mismatching something that is completely irrelevant to what is keeping hold of the problem. So that's just a starting point, really. There's more to do after that, but there are so many potential reasons for why somebody would keep hold of feeling utterly worthless about themselves that a really good starting point is to find out why it makes sense and how it protects. And like I say, I like to do this through the through the uh, plus minus technique that feeds into the single sentence. And so I will put a link underneath this video. So let me know what you think of that. And thanks for watching.